Hi everybody, I'm testing my new microphone to see how well it works. This is the real microphone and this is a fake microphone to make it look like a vlogging setup. And I really want this queer flag here behind me. Maybe I should move this over. Yeah, yeah, I like that way more. And now put this. This microphone is fake, but it's just, it's just to look like a blogger, that's it. It's pretty fun. Just to be like, yeah, I got really, really poor lighting in here. Here, I actually kind of want to put these bottles a little bit more alive with the lights so that it like looks like jewel effect. It looks green. Yeah, fake vlog set up, like, I don't know. I feel like all these, like, blogger dudes, like, they really want a trans woman or a woman to really succeed. Like, uh, well, who's else? Who, who do I look up to that does more editing, dude? Chad Chad? Who might help Chad 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 out? Because that lady or person, I have no idea what they go by. I'm a trans woman, maybe they're non-binary, so it's better to say them in the first place. Um, but I'll probably upload this test as well, because um, my plan today is to show off this little setup here in this room where I have this flag, and I can sort of just sit here with my cute little freaking heckin' little skirts and things and cross my legs, and... Uh, uh, it's a little bit of a weird angle, I guess. Maybe I could raise the camera a little bit more somehow. Um, literally just using a stack of clothing, I guess. Because that's what I'm using now anyways. <laughs> just placing this here. But I got this really nice microphone that my mom bought me a while back. But I hadn't been able to set it up yet. And I just got this uh, new device that I don't even have a SIM card in. So I kind of like do a couple of like, there at one point I was like playing SoundCloud music and doing a recording with the other cell phone. My other cell phone's been glitching like mad for YouTube lately. And I wonder if it's perhaps because, just because of some like quirky uploads that I made like during the uh, healing process of my injury, which was like, I mean, I, I said it a bunch of times that it was, you know, raw material that needed help and well I mean yeah we'll see what happens like I totally at any point talk about like wanting to turn this channel around you know what I mean and um for like a full audience even is what I meant like doing it so that I'm actually paying attention to bleeps and doing things like that i'll probably have to start a whole new one but off the bat i don't think that i should i mean when i'm like when i'm like injured and like basically just like um well let's see what this uploading almost daily lately is really about right i was injured in a in a hate crime sort of fashion at a chiropractor and then I went through a religious experience that I also wanted to document on the internet because I felt like it was important and it was almost impossible at the time for me to like be like apt while talking about it like in general just apt towards a general audience for sure is like for like you know what I mean for like a full audience not right um I just was, I wasn't right in the head. I'm about to go to the neurologist tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, I, I forget what day it is. It's coming up real soon, neurology. And neurology, they're gonna... Again, the scans were done too late to find broken blood vessels, which, like, again, this isn't about proving whether or not I was injured. It's just about, like, continuing, like, you know, I called them, actually, before they called me. Because I was like, dude, this has been such a slow process. And my neck has been, like, I've been doing this, like, 
it, it, it's this thing where my head is like off like right at the base and then like lately I've I, I mean I like recently got like spastic lung pain which can come from so many things mold in this apartment more than likely like probably like a thousand percent lots of it and and dust that I've been doing some cleaning ever since that day that I like I did the salmon video after I like I put on this one white little like waffles knit robe that I've got that's a little cuter than the big like large black one that is like multi-gender that like I I personally you know, I'm very pro uh, not like prone but like I'm very like Maybe that's a, a right word to use as well. Maybe there's a way, way to contextualize that. But I feel like I do want to do, like, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, this, this channel is just going to be, like, trying everything. And then I'll probably split it back into, like, a, just a music channel. Because um, that's honestly my really my goal. But I love being able to just, like, vlog. And I love being able to talk about random shit. And I feel like that's honestly what people do. Today, sometimes I feel like, honestly, the United States shoots itself in the foot while hallucinating that their foot is me. Um, it's It's quite a weird thing to say but it's almost like when I moved to the area of the western New York uh, Pacific Northwest it almost seemed like that was the breaking point that real estate people declared a state of emergency and that was when I moved up to Seattle from Olympia and I was already set to be homeless hopefully I don't bother my neighbor who also talks across this I've, like, promised to him that, um, not, like, a real promise, but I've said that I don't usually use this room, but I do favor using, like, this little blogging setup right here. Um, so today I've got planned, I was gonna do a mukbang, just like I've been doing, with, uh, I bought, like, a really cool, like, girly, it's, like, I had two options, and one of them honestly sounded a little bit savorier and maybe more delicious, in fact, and then also these Kalbi brand um, sweet potato chips that had this shape. I maybe had them once already, and I don't recall because I actually started going to this Korean store after I was hitting the head, and I, I remember because I started going to the aesthetician, basically... One of the reasons why I'm posting is because I mentioned I was struck in the head by a misandrous woman. I, I like, I've got suspicions that it, like, was a misandrous woman and that it was, like, this weird, like, assuming vigilante justice and then finding out that the person that, you know that you went after over something or that you did something to like legitimately life-threatening to almost because like they're right like I honestly feel like medical professionals in this area really really tried to save her from from being charged with assaults and Perhaps the authorities, the medical authorities that I've prompted about her possible malpractice are going to do the same thing, just like the Office of Civil Rights in this region hasn't helped me with my rampant discrimination against my wanting to transition with, you know, with help with, like, these doctors and things like this. Um... And since my last upload, it's been a gloomy sort of couple of days, and I got that crazy, like, during cleaning, I just all of a sudden got this upper back, like, spastic lung pain, you know what I mean? But it went away really quickly, and it was almost like I've been, I've actually been very ill since I cleaned my ear, and I'm now, like, the biggest advocate in the United States 
for ear cleaning places. Like, there's a place in Toronto. There's places, like, when I look it up in my phone, it's, like, Toronto is where it shows me because it's, like, literally, like, geographically right there. So, it, could, it reads these places that are just across the border. Um, anyways. And... I'm the biggest advocate for that. I got my ear, like, clean during this, like, sort of, like, improvised procedure by a primary care provider, and it was, like, extremely helpful. It would have ended up as a hospital visit as an ear infection, and treating it with medication probably wouldn't have been as wise. This is a fake microphone. This is a real microphone. It's funny. I just wanted it to look like a blogger. I just wanted it to look like a blogger lady. By the way, I'm wearing shorts as well. You know, so they're Adidas, like, little little shorts, you know what I mean? It's, like, and then there's several skirts. Um, um, I'm about to make, literally, so I posted a pizza the other day that I made that was actually pretty flames on the day that the dough was made. Um, it turned out really good because it was, like, a half sourdough and then half poolish and AP flour poolish. And then half like bread dough, sourdough type, you know, it came together in this way that like for at home, 525 degree oven, I've never done better. And now the, the dough is like three days old, you know, it's been sitting in the fridge and it smells, literally smells like heaven. But uh, back to the uh, turtle, turtle chips. And I went to the Korean store and got these chips. So I'm doing a mukbang, trying the uh, the girly injongi flavor, which is peanut butter flavor, but the the turtle was dressed in like a Korean princess outfit, or maybe just a silk garment of some kind that I'm not really familiar who wore. Um, I know a couple of things about like, oh my god. But I don't, the last thing that I want to think about while being introduced to Korean culture or any culture actually is like what was for, what was for the wealthy and what was for the poor. It's funny how around the world that sometimes like it's like here in the United States, like, I don't know. I don't know. The United States is a melting pot. And we'll never know out here. Um, but yeah, testing the microphone. And then I'm gonna do the Enjoy Me Turtle Chips video. And then I was gonna pick up my guitar and show off how I maybe like. I'm maybe the person in all time that I've ever heard. I'm maybe the person in all time that I've ever heard doing a cover of One Silver Dollar by uh, Marilyn Monroe. Um, I'm probably the second the, the second best because well I don't have that like accompaniment maybe one day I could do self accompaniment once I start using my interface again and start like basically like for like just not even like retire this channel and like delete it because I do want to keep it up um I wonder if maybe like well, I actually know for sure that the media is going insane, just like they always do about everywhere that I move or everything that I do or everywhere that I go. And also people around the world also do, do they kind of do the same thing that are like the sort of like creepy, like call center, scammy, like sorts of people that like just I I don't understand what it is about the media that they want to not help um with like I I I don't understand like what it is that you don't understand about like me and how well 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're either gonna have to find me a place to live, like I say, that is like nice and cold because I am well, I have like U.S. passport rights, so I can choose that. Had them since birth. Anyways, it's like it's a complicated process that is like currently causing. A, diff a different type of nausea than catharsis catharsis it's like I'm just like literally just nauseous thinking about it and talking about it um but I'll also talk a little bit about some food vlogging stuff that I was planning on doing which is something that I really should I like even if it's not vlog style I should really be like behind food operations and the types of foods that I'm vouching for, it's like, you know when there's a song that like people are like, if everybody listened to this type of music, the world would be healed of all. Anyways, I think that my likes of food are more up alleys that are like healthier for the body and like cause less, uh, just like, dude. <laughs> and that and Hopefully we'll get some ear cleaning places out here because I was like literally saying today about how a lot of these American court documentaries like probably too many of them unknowingly involve something like a dental infection or an ear infection like or a blocked ear or a buildup of wax or something that's really painful and that no medical professional wants to address of somebody and that they've learned to basically live with, but they can't live without things that are like complete numbing agents. And, you know, I got real sick when my ear got, ear canal got drained and then like my whole life and like shit that was like really messed up started making sense. And I wanted to puke. I still kind of want to puke. So speaking of some food blogging things, after mentioning that I want to, that I'm, because actually, like, it's going to do the opposite. I, I'm, it's literally going to make my appetite to talk about what I did with the pizza. That pizza dough has just been sitting there. I'm about to put it on a tray, Detroit style, and let it kind of, kind of marinate coagulate you feel me with the yeast now i'm just kidding it rises it proofs it like it gets perfect last time i did it round this time i want to do it like kind of that small small tray detroit style mm. with like with with some crust like hanging out of the thing like done sort of artesian we'll call it artesian Detroit bar style okay but it's done in Buffalo but minus the cupperoni this one I actually I called it you know how the other day I did the Shanae O'Connor pie this one I call it the Tony Bennett pizza and I like to say I like to do my favorite little parody of Sinatra you make me it's like it's like a girl it's like the like unsympathetic female joke of a song that I like I once sang it while I was pissed off at this one doctor once this one nurse practitioner bitch you make me feel like shit you make me feel like I should quit I bet Tony Bennett would have fucking loved that shit, but this pizza was vibing with the Tony Bennett thing for some reason, because it just, I don't know, it's just got class. It's just got so much class. There's like a white coconut base that I made with coconut milk, but you never fucking know. If I, like, if I just told you that it was a creamy base, that's probably what I would call it, just a creamy base. You wouldn't mistake it for anything else. And then it's like, like the, the, Italian blend of like cheeses from I think it's fucking Great Value or some shit that's actually quite nice There's like some really good ones in there and then I added gorgonzola cheese to that blend and it's been kind of marinating in the fridge and then I put one slice of Swiss on top of it and then I put the perilla leaf 
like like Korean seasoned perilla leaves that are done are done right like I feel like it's one of this like one of the little trays of banchan and things that this place sells that is done the best very authentic it does have anchovy in it um which is like literally like for future later like me preferring everything vegan reference i could use the double golden fish brand fish sauce that i like and i understand the use of like the same these ingredients i actually i actually like to make traditional styles of things before I make vegan things or during or after because they well lately I've actually been sort of like craving and excusing myself for eating animal products and and dairy and all that kind of stuff because of like the head injury and the like the geographical location that I'm in and the financial situation that I'm in it's like yeah I mean I made it work this month with food it was like it's weird because it didn't look like it's so fucked up though the other day I left a little bit of cream cheese out I hate making mistakes like that and lately it's been common because I'm like post head injury head trauma I'm about to answer a questionnaire for the neurology and it's gonna be like just full of yeah telling them about headaches and especially when when this should this unblocking my ear canal took place um so one silver dollar tony bennett pizza and then This will probably be later when I have money again, but, and I hope I catch the CSA. If I catch the CSA, maybe I'll do another recipe of something. In the meanwhile, the community supported agriculture has been giving away these free grocery bags that I did the potato chips video with it. Did some cool stuff with that. Um, but what else? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, I watched this video of like this, um, the Juicy Lucy burger, and the, the, the for some reason, like the contrast of the red onion and the green lettuce in the shot. And I, I know it could be any burger, but that, like, it literally stayed on my mind. And I, I got like, I'm like really hungry for it. And, and it actually doesn't sound like a bad idea, the Minnesota style Juicy Lucy, but I like to be creative. And so I think that I've, I've, I've like nailed what my favorite burger recipe is at the moment, which is like, if I'm using buns, I like it with, um, like a special sauce that's made with the Korean yellow radish and then like kind of like massage a little bit of like rice wine into it before you like mix it in and make a special sauce like that and I got omuraisu I can make omuraisu and I can make steamed eggs this month which is like super smart rationing food. But with the Juicy Lucy, I actually want to do like, um, when I was in Portland, staying in a part of Portland that I don't even really know, there was like an Airstream that would sell like quote unquote Viking food. And, um, this Viking food was like really delicious and I I believe the thing that I ate was like it was like these meatballs inside of a leaf which is like basically like a potato sort of like 
at this particular place they made it more like like a wrap flatbread type of like sort of like non looking thing but it was like leaves like soft really soft because it was potato you know how potato stuff is like real soft so i'm thinking like the juicy lucy like take two meatballs like stuffed with cheese and put put it on there three of them or four fucking five of them literally just like stack it up and then put like some like lettuce greens and those red onions i could also like go as far as um pickling white onion with beets but i feel like that's more for other things i feel like that's for like i, I like literally can't get my mind off of the thought of like a juicy lucy with the red onion green lettuce um that one makes me hungry and then um and in general the leafs roll was delicious then um so i got pizza and then i've got all these like asian like things that i'm like rationing food for the summer oh i might go to the burmese store before the end of the month and if i do go to the burmese store i might show you all what it looks like to consume a dish with fresh krapao i can make a pho uh with hopefully that's the one that i really want to lay my hands on is some krapao that's the one that i like the taste of the best thai in thai it's called krapao thai mint that's the one that i really want and I wish I could go all the way around to the other side of town where I know they sell rice patty herbs. But this lady sells random. I mean, still, I love I love the Burmese store on Grand Street in Buffalo. Gets these shipments of jungle like produce that from Southeast Asia that I honestly am in love with. And I know that a lot of people consider cultural appropriation. It's literally down the ways. From the tops where the white supremacist massacre happened that is filled with food from where I'm from, Island of Puerto Rico. It's like considered Afro-Caribbean food, so that's part of why it's like one of the only tops which is a national chain that is influenced by that sort of like fare and goods and stuff. And it's like literally such an enormous shame that I feel like attention towards that part of what it is and what was there at the store um, was literally like detracted from it and and placed as part of the blame, like literally part of the blame as to why it was a target. You understand what I mean? Like, oh, perhaps we should just have the monotony of, you know, the, the chain and just have it be all, you know, culturally homogenous, you know what I mean? Like, just remove the Puerto Rican sort of version of the national chain that, you know, or, you know, call it that it had to do with East Buffalo and, like, the, you know, poverty, although, though, like, it's like East Buffalo's right there. People come to the tops that has the Puerto Rican food. And I think that Puerto Rican food is something that buffalo people are like oh you know like them puerto ricans they they got a whole way they talk that is like there's like it's just like us where you got like the fancy talkers and you got the people that are kind of more ratchet sometimes you feel me Amen. Like in Puerto in Puerto Rican, like if you if if I'm speaking Spanish, well, actually another thing to mention about the comparison between Puerto Rican Spanish and American English is that I would consider them the dead accents of each of their um like languages that they relate with 
whatever. I, there's a better way to say that, but I, I can't. I'm stuck right now. I think it's pizza time. And, um, last mention is that, yeah, the, the Juicy Lucy Leafs and the, um, another one I'm going to mention, which is that I want to make a Dominican mango. I realized that out here, um, where the sun don't shine as much, even though it did all, all, all summer, some of the things didn't work very well. The buckwheat sprouting, like the Ann Whitmore dish, did not work in Western New York region for me, especially with like the gear I was, the stuff I was using, the equipment I was using, did not work for me. And that was a damn bummer. And then it wasn't just that the buckwheat didn't sprout. The papaya also didn't ripen properly. I ended up seeing at the co-op that they received some that had possibly ripened in the tropics. Because when I tried to ripen my Walmart papaya here, it didn't work out. And it was not very good. Um, it wasn't good. Like legit wasn't ripe and it was inedible and it didn't taste good it was bitter and none of the dish worked out and it ended up just turning into a bunch of fruit flies and pissing me off so and then what else didn't work like doesn't work out here um plantains don't ripen properly like if you buy plantains Oh, actually, no, actually, the plantains were okay. I ripened it. They actually worked out medio medio, we'll call it like this. But the fun part is that mangu uses unripe. So when I buy them from the store, they come green usually. One day I'll probably get them and they'll be like maduro as fuck, and I'll, I'll have to, I'll be using them for something like amarillo or mangu. It's It's not unusual, especially for someone like me who grew up with like a Dominican around me a lot. Um to like Dominican food quite as much as Puerto Rican food. I might make half of it I might or I might make half of it tostones, which is like the Puerto Rican thing to do, or like it would be mofongo instead of mangu. But sometimes when you're Caribeña, you just crave something of the dishes that, like, I remember this lady, this Dominican lady, would make me mangu. She'd make me, like, these big Tupperware full of mangu. And I'd go literally, and, like, so crazy that, like, oh, by the way, when you're trying these plantain dishes that I recommend, go easy as you're eating them. Because they, um, they leave a lump in your throat that is, like, just like a weird it's like a weird aspect of eating plant like unripe plantain dishes that are especially the mashed ones maybe but even if you're eating just like twice fried plantain tostón puerto rican food careful like careful because like or peruvian i mean like to do the same thing everybody likes to eat tostones in the tropics or whatever plantain dishes i don't even know what they call them but you'll see me doing mangu and sometimes like craving it over mofongo mofongo is like garlicky and delicious and mangu is vinegary and delicious and so that's where the red onion the same red onion from the juicy lucy burger comes into play here because that has like these like vinegared marinated red onions and you'll often see it with the tre golpe like whatever i've heard of it on the internet it's very viral because of the uh reminds me a lot of a puerto rican food that um when you go out like when you go from the city out into the rural regions of puerto rico you'll find these like street side stalls that sell cheese from the uh from the rural region Cam Campesino and from Campos from just like people's 
and they come alegre de la montaña with these little, they come in banana leaves. And what people do is you take it home to the city, slice it up, eat some of it fresh, and also put some of it on the, on a little saute skillet and get the cheese pulled with a little bit of jam, a little bit of some, our most common jams like guava. Guava is one of them. And I've got orange marmalade for Alice. I love my, my English name is fantastic. I think I've done such a good job of choosing it and people are so judgmental about me getting a second name change that's already done. I just have to go get it. It's like annoying. I need somebody to come out and help me. Cause I'm very like, it's kind of seemingly pathetic. Lockport is like, it's right there on the map. You know what I mean? Anyone would have like, I mean, a lot of people would have, would think that I should have maybe like, I don't know, one of my options is to like go out and like rent a U-Haul for the day. Like I did when I moved, like I would if I had to go somewhere. Um, but, but it's just like, it's kind of weird. It's like, it's probably more like socially appropriate. Like if you're not like actually moving to go and get a car rental, but it's like more expensive or maybe, I don't know, maybe I could get a better deal somehow. I have no idea. It's super weird. And nobody out here has been very helpful ever. And in fact, there's been a lot of negativity. Again, I think I'll go back to how it's like been New York and like Niagara County. You know how Niagara County, it's like literally like all old battlefields of like wars that happened between like the Ontarios and the freaking like the, these Americans like all fought out here. Like, and it's like weird how people war over this territory still and and yeah and I, I honestly think that people's like reproductive instincts like mess up their brains really really badly as well as it's like American practices that are actually like they're like like more accepted by American officials when they're done by their pawns and executed towards people that I don't know for some reason like I, I could not see why in hell people wouldn't want what I have to offer. We're not even talking about the migrant problem, neither in New York City or Erie County that has like, not even followed me here. You've just probably only just seen it on the news lately for some fucking reason, but there's been waves of it throughout, you know, the, the weird sort of off-put, like, <laughs> whichever wing response, that, that's, that's what's really, I don't know, media's not been, good fun, I, I actually, I hate, the way that society has made created this need for cell phone devices and I wish that people like me that end up in situations where like we're in the situation that we're in because we need to address our like how like I'm I'm literally trying to cure my own insanity I'm like literally trying to you know I'm I'm 
enough insanity has been rubbed off on me that I'm insane or feeling like I'm on, like, you know, I'm feeling like I'm about to snap or something, but not, I mean, not, I'm not trying to worry anybody. I do, I do cope rather well. I wasn't very, like, I, I'm, like, really shocked and surprised with myself and commend myself for having completed this healing my injury without ending up in any sort of trouble besides that one day that I you know and by now I like, kind of get it but I also am still have my bit of angie not angry but like angie like just <laughs> Man. Thank goodness it's just that though, because my neck, my neck injury actually was really bad. It's taken being better from it to be able to let go of some of it. And now that I'll get the injection, and hopefully that'll go away, and then this the swelling right here will go away. And once all that's over, and like all the risks of ending up like how I had to take those corticosteroids again. Once all that's gone and all these like critical like bumps on my head are gone, then I'll finally be able to let go. And also when my little hairline comes back too, I'll be a little bit happier as well. So besides the mangu, it's not talked about enough about how a huge colonial presence in the island of Puerto Rico and almost everywhere I've ever lived is the Asian American community. And um, in Condado, like I grew up eating like probably way too much raw fish and sushi. Um, in retrospect, like I don't really, I pay a little bit more mind to like how stuff's prepared and how it gets to the table nowadays than I used to, but um, I talk about some of the experiences with like the shrimp tempura temaki being like really like, I used to go and get like three of them after like doing lots of physical exercise. And it's just, the memories will never go away of like, like downing one and having that last bite that's so It's like the last bite of the ice cream cone it's like filled with like soy sauce and tobiko and mayo and daikon fucking delicious it's my favorite shit and so maybe maybe this maybe this month you'll see that if i get banana blossoms you might see me make a round of that this month. And if they have daikon, they probably do either that or some other type of radish that I could use. That'll be just as good, like the bulbous types of like white radish that are like just as good, but not as like smelly as daikon. Oh, but I have a yellow pickle, Korean yellow pickle, which is da daikon. Sweet. So I'll save some of those. I was going to make my secret sauce today with some of them. Save it for like the one type of regular burger. I'll show off when I do that too. I'm not like really undecided as to whether I want to do impossible beef or regular beef. In fact, I think all around, I might even rather start to think again about making forming like veggie type patties out of things maybe I don't know but I don't I'm not vegan at the moment actually with the mangu speaking of the Asian things I started talking about the Asian things because with the mangu I will be making Chinese style steamed fish Maybe I can, if I can get some of that produce from the Southeast Asian store when I make that dish, I'll add that to it as well. 
some I was thinking about it like galangal instead of ginger, krapao instead of um, green onion. But I have a bamboo steamer and I'm like, heck, that and I make a mean steamed falafel. Like there's this dish that I grew up eating at a vegetarian restaurant in Puerto Rico that was a steamed falafel with our typical, right? Our, it's like kind of this South American food that is like repurposed for eating by Puerto Ricans and it was created by Puerto Ricans. The, I think it's my personal favorite type of kidney bean stew that there is. Some of you all might like your, your pork hocks on your bean stew. Some of you all might like whatever it is that you like on your kidney bean stew. Puerto Ricans like those big chunks of pumpkin. And we start our cooking process with our, hopefully, those of us who know better know that it's hopefully some fresh sofrito, something that somebody made in the last while or froze that was like legit tasting and you know what it is if you know what it is because I've said it before how Goya, Goya sofrito kind of fails the Puerto Rican palate and I think the like they fail the mission of like convincing others that Puerto Rican food is palatable and good by making stuff products like their sofrito which has the tomato already in it and then they freeze it and for some reason all that comes together and like the acid of the tomato just ruins everything even frozen and it's like an absolutely terrible example of what sofrito tastes like and I've mentioned that if you buy their recaito and if you buy their mojo and you kind of put both of those together and then you take a f can of tomato sauce that's like a good can of tomato sauce you know like lively tasting and then like you kind of sofreir you kind of saute with some fresh cilantro and culantro pepper that is not spicy because sometimes in the United States people will like advertise like spicy peppers that look like some, whatever they're like scotch bonnets but they're they say it's culantro and then you'll ruin your food taste it first make sure it's not spicy it's not spicy it just should taste flor floral like it should be a pepper that like doesn't it shouldn't taste like bell peppers bell peppers go with then and i have dishes with bell pepper and like marmite that i'll show off one day i just like again i don't know if it's vlog style but i should have my hand in food in some sort of way and, and or i love i love having the freedom to cook for myself because the stuff i make is way tastier, better, more creative, like, I come up with the best ideas, if I could eat my food, my dishes every day, rotating them, I'd be one of the happiest eaters in society, and I wish it was easier, I, like, I wish it was easier, and I wish it was actually, I kind of wish I didn't, I was never like forced into this nature of like becoming my own personal chef. Like part of me wishes that I could enjoy things that women, like trans women and women and women and feminine people and like to enjoy. Girls just wanna have fun, you know? Go to a place that has a hired set of cooks and chef and 
dishwasher that I don't never have to have my mother try to convince me that right now I should be trying anything but healing my insanity but I think I've like proven and some recently with something that took place I think a lot of I think today I was like hearing a lot of bull, like a lot of bullshit on on YouTube about like oh YouTubers getting in trouble for this and this and saying this and this and uh and like this you know this person in Philly and they probably have like they probably look at like well I like add anyone on Facebook which like isn't like recommended and like I wish somebody would come and tell me that I should like delete stuff and then like find me a therapist and stuff and I wish that I actually wish there was a way to tell my landlord hey look I've been damaged by my cell phone devices by my smartphone devices um and being on them and whatnot and I I feel like I've been like my brain has like it's starting to result in damage and I don't even want to know about whatever it is like I, I like but for now I'm posting daily because of like this racist assumption of vigilante justice that wasn't justice because it wasn't known the, you know the real facts about it and that's not the way to go about things is to just try to take someone's life or almost or all, like disfigure them a little bit as well at least temporarily and so this is what posting daily is is all about it's about just showing my face every day since and you know like whatever just being a blogger if you think I could just like play a video game on this channel you're wrong I literally the only video game that I have is LSDJ But I got a monitor and I got my tea table and I know all the resources in the area and honestly if any of you social experiment type of social media entrepreneurs see this and think you could help out in any way and not, not necessarily even financially I'm talking about pulling up dude I'm talking about literally pulling up and like the kind of stuff I've been asking for stuff that's super like bloggable like getting a ride to the Slavic food store, getting a ride to the Burmese store, and showing that, and then to, to the tops that has Puerto Rican food, down, AF. It's a little bit more out of the way than like in my old neighborhood, it was like the easiest to get to, and nowadays it's like the hardest to get to. That one and the other one in that neighborhood. Um, But like down, down AF for the Puerto Rican mango and Dominican um, mango and something else that I make real good Dominican that I absolutely love is Yanni Keke, or we call it arepa in Puerto Rican Spanish. That it's like so good. It's it's basically kind of reminds me of those little those little Indian fritters 
that are puffed and filled, but they're not filled with anything. They're served as like an appetizer. And there's a version of them that has coconut flakes and coconut water in the mix or coconut milk. And it's a cold butter fried thing that like puffs up in the middle. Mm. Oh God, that's so good. Hopefully I can make all that stuff. And maybe, I mean, high potassium stuff isn't the best for me, but I tend to like, like, there's a lot of stuff that I do really love that has, you know, potassium, like, like the Russian mineral water that I love is literally a potassium supplement in some ways. Yeah, I shouldn't be drinking a heck of a lot of it, but it's super delicious. And it's really, really good for my stomach. Otherwise, I don't know whatever the heck it is going on with it. It helps my stomach a lot. And I think uh, maybe the Ukrainian one is more for me because it has a little bit less of the intensity of the stuff like potassium and minerals. Um, or from somewhere else. I was going to order some recently, but I, like, I put off on that because maybe later. First, it'll be, like, this month, I'm thinking after Neurology Burmese store. All that fresh produce, maybe, like, some um, rice noodles, make, like, a rice noodle dish, some kimao or something with, like, a stack of, um, of these, um herbs or pho because i actually already have most of the ingredients for pho i already have the noodles and i already have all the seasonings for making the broth i already have all the like spices and things and then i could buy they they sell chinese cooler donuts that are like frozen and i've got like soy milk in the fridge and i could do one day like a breakfast Taiwan breakfast with like Taiwan South China breakfast with like soy milk and yutiao and then I could also do pho with kwai with like this yeah because you know what you gotta realize sometimes is that it's hard to become an expert at every single type of cuisine that there is and sometimes you gotta realize that some of the prepackaged versions are better than your occasional take on it because you're not putting in the practice all day all the time like every time I try to make kwai don't turn out that good does it turn out like like yu tiao or like kwai kind of tastes like something else like a freaking beignet or something whereas if i take a chinese donut and cut it into pieces and fry it it's literally spot on tastes like kwai but it has like a little bit of a different texture so yeah you can't become an expert at every single thing and another thing that I hope to grab is a piece of frozen durian, which will cost me quite a lot of money. Um, like 20 bucks, probably close to it. That'll be like the most expensive thing, like 15 bucks for like a four pieces of it or something, five, six pieces of it. But it'll be worth it. And like if I see mangosteens, I might get them too. And whatever money is left, I will probably spend on AliExpress.com on more kawaii shit. <laughs> Literally, dude. Dude, I was, I was at the aesthetician the other day, and she's like, she asked me about my day, and I was like, dude, you really just asked me about my day? Like, do you want the world to explode? Cause like, and then I started going on this rant. And it was super funny about how, like, when I get to the Dylan Mulvaney part,
women like her are like literally nervous that I, as a trans woman, you know, a pr like a trans woman that claims that I've been doing it for 10 years and that I'm being discriminated against and all these things are like literally scared that I'm gonna say something like everyone else says, misgendering, to, like, at this point, like, I gotta, like, you know, I mean, I'm being, empath like, empathetic and, like, kind towards somebody that has received bullying, uh, but she, it's for sure, like, not nothing that anybody does, even the lady in Canada that did all the weird shit, for, like, the media used it to fuck up everybody else's, like, every other trans life on earth, like they do with fucking anyone that's Jewish, and I've seen like that like I honestly have literally heard anti-semitism based on and, and like anti-catholicism based on like allegations and and like clergy members and pope and all the weird former pope papacy and things and like everybody they're always trying to do that it's weird we live, we live in a really walking on eggshell society and, and like, we don't want to feel that way. I, like, the other day I couldn't hold my screams because of between pain and the way that I felt, like, emotionally, I, like, couldn't hold some, like, screams in the corner of my own apartment that, you know, and I used to do it on the street in Seattle. I'll do it anywhere when I really have to do it. I really need to find a place to do it. And I really have to hope that nobody misperceives it. That nobody asks any questions about it. That's why I got to keep it short. And I got to stop sometimes. And today I was able to kind of like... Sort of like hold my screams. And... Sometimes it's hard for me to even do it in the morning. Sometimes it's like especially hard in the morning, which is like rough. So then I got it's like I gotta go on a walk. And in the in the past ten months, eleven months, some of those days have been like, it's an emergency because my neck, my nerve pain is so bad, and this is associated with this. I mean, I I, I just can't imagine like, I it, it's not like something. I feel like people are like. I hope you learned your lesson. I literally, like, I bet there's a lot of people out there that probably just, like, she wants to think about what she did. Maybe even part of the family of the person that I used to speak with. Perhaps they were fictional. I keep saying that I don't know now whether they were fictional or not or whatnot. But I honestly, like, I really think that, like, her? Oh, this, this, no, no one should, any, should even, like, tell her that, that somebody did this to me, because, she'll, like, think it's her fault or something, you know, and, and, like, I feel like that's, that's terrible, very, very toxic society, very, very toxic. Some of, some of the stuff that, that I spoke to her about, even though it was very appropriate, was like, like, I remember when, um, she's like, oh, I'm having a, I'm going swimming with my family, and I really want somebody to tell me about my bathing suit, and I'm like, oh, even though your grandmother and, and your friend know that we talk, since it's like a private like sort of still thing I don't think it's a good idea but then it also makes me feel sad because it's like if if it like if it's weird for you to send like a good friend of yours that you've had for a while who you trust like a, an example of what you'll look like um tomorrow in a context that you feel like it could make you feel uncomfortable and that you want input and, and you want to show somebody else to sort of ration 
ration it out and to make sense of it maybe and like destigmatize it in your brain and your dear young like I think at that point they were like 17 and I remember saying like I don't wanna I don't I don't think I need to see it but I, I and and if I was your aunt living down the street I'd probably head over and be like what's what's the what's the problem what's what do you think is wrong with it you know and like in plain sight but not like that um and I just remember saying like um if if you feel uncomfortable put on a t-shirt get yourself get yourself one of their t-shirts one of your uncles grandpa cousins brother get yourself one of their t-shirts and throw it up over the the thing you know the is it skimpy <laughs> and then a couple of weeks later i was like i was ice bathing out in the field and i, I couldn't help but post it on instagram I, I was wearing a bathing suit but i was just like oh this isn't actually about like showing off my bathing suit or this ice bath and then I showed what was behind me and I was doing it in a field out there that I it's like pretty close and it was very easy to get that stuff out there I mean it had to be it had to be easy enough I, I made it happen I think it was worth the ice bath I think I could do it in my tub actually in the future but just by buying like two gallons of, or whatever two pound bag of ice or whatever and putting it in the bath and then filling it up with like lukewarm water and letting it get to that temperature although I know that it's like sub-zero I know it's like even colder with the ice baths and all that but again we don't got that kind of money out here um but I was just like ice bathing and what it, what it was that I was really documenting in this little short little film that I did was that there was a deer that posted up behind me and back then I looked so cute I was like my hair was dad blonde and I think when I went out there I like did my little fake freckles I might do when I do my one silver dollar today I might I got a I got actually a pimple right where Marilyn used to have a her beauty marks and I was thinking oh I'll fill it in with my freckle pen and again, I'm I'm probably the person that's like second best. Maybe even some aspects of how I do the cover is like even it's like even better than hers, but I feel like there's like there's aspects of her professional guitar accompaniment that I still haven't gotten down and that I cannot do. So in order not to make myself feel lame, an early choice of mine, like when I was living in Seattle and busking a lot, I used to have a classical guitar, just like Marilyn in River of No Return. Um, or whatever it's called, River Returns, I have no idea. I don't remember what it's called. And then there's another beautiful song on there that every time I hear it, I, I think about my little niece the there's another song that's famous from that film that Marilyn plays along and sings and and there's a lot of songs in that key that are from that time period that kind of go together and I and they're very bright brightening songs that feel insanity like I need and yeah you know songs like like it's like one silver dollar bright silver dollar you, you hear my guitar as well later I'll do I'll do it some pretty decent justice even the the one that's like the verse that like changes up a bit like changing hearts Changing lights, changing hands. It's so epic. So epic. And I think, like, I don't know, there's some, like, 
again, the guitar accompaniment is fantastic, and the chord progression is as spot on as it can be, mine's slightly lesser in that sense, but I do the singing phenomenally, I'm, if I give it really my best go, which I will, after I do the mukbang with the peanut butter snacks and have my pizza, Um, but yeah, one silver dollar, and then, um, when troubles melt like lemon drops. Cause that's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow way up high. There's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. And then, um, oh yeah, my favorite, my favorite take on this one too, like my favorite, yeah, my favorite one of this, this one is, uh, Bjork. I love to love. But my baby just wants to dance. He loves to dance. He loves to dance. Dance. Oh, I love to love. But my baby just wants to dance. Oh, I love to love. But there's no time for a romance. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's perfect. She did it as a child. And it's like really cute and like I don't know Christmas talent show it's like it's Christmas youth talent show sound that like goes really well with the tune it goes really fantastic with the tune and I, I definitely kind of um I mean, I have to even think that there's uh, something to that or something. I, I think the original is very similar, though. I think it's very similar. I think that women, girls, trans women, all the feminine has its central point and their, its overarching umbrella terms and, like, things that belong to all of us that maybe the wording of their, like, of their definitions of, of, like, the, you know, their words that are most apt for them, maybe, like, you can relate them more to one of us than another of us, but, um, end this video on, on a solid note, and take you all to something and say something about it. Show off my wall of awesomeness. Christos Baskres. For my, for my Russian friends and Ukrainian friends. And... So, every single part of this is important. Youth the middle of your life, probably about where I am heading into at the moment, and being old, crone, being old and wise and about to die, and it's about to just fold over on itself and start over and over again. Pay attention, friends. Anyways, that's my, um, that's my alibi for the day. I'm about to, I'm about to say fuck you for Marilyn Monroe, for her, okay? And say that in this life, you can catch me not wearing makeup, sometimes.
on film, on camera, and I'm still cute, even when I get hit in the head by jealous bitches. <laughs> and and I'm also gonna put on the makeup. in the best light for her and do that second best cover I've ever seen, heard of, or talked, heard, spoke of, heard a word of ever in my life. I got an original song too that's like besides that pop punk verse that I posted the other day. Um, that I used to, I think I might have it um, on a public setting on my other channel. I might have put it back. At one point, I, like, privatized all those videos because I think I got frustrated about how there's, like, a lack of quality to them, you know? These aren't, like... It's, like, I feel like I just sat down in my setup to try to, like, evoke this feeling, like... You understand what I mean? Like, I think that people want me to do stuff something else really cool that I'm doing like I want I'm gonna film a video like I, I mentioned once the sky gets blue I'm gonna film like this video of like me walking down my freaking my damn street is a mu like a museum of like American like delusion and like insanity it's really weird I, like I'm not saying it like in a like a like I'm being detrimental towards them but it's like we've got this like old company here that used to make nuts and bolts that used to like bring like Ukrainian immigrants and then like the wild garlic and the trains and being so close to both Toronto, B Buffalo, New York City. Like, there's even like these, like lots of abandonment and that's a small town. Like, there's this one window that you look into and this is where like, I mean like literal like stereotypical dystop dystopia there's a beautiful Polish church with, like, some statues of icons. Like, I think it's a Marian statue. I think it's Mary. And I love that. Because I like, I like Mariology art. I think it's quite beautiful. There's a real nice place to sit over there. And there's, like, apparently there was, like, literally, like, freaking... Like, tens and tens of pubs and things in this in the in, like this originally like this was kind of a like a place that people were like into that pubs bars but now there's only a few of those tavern pub places like left not so many of them but there's like that old bolt The most dystopian view ever. You look into one of the windows of the abandoned buildings. I don't know if there was a fire in it or something. Or if this is just from like heat and climate change. But you look in like the. Like whatever the, the wall panels were made out of. Like was like a silicone plastic type. And it's now melted and warped. And in the corner. Like just like you know saw with the freaking radio flyer bike, like the little, those little tiny little radio flyers that are for kids. It's just sitting in the corner, like collecting dust and there's like rubble. And then the, 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 like the way that the park views are like toward, like towards the sky are like absolutely like so like for making like I think, like, I was just talking about the fact that I'm trying to just, like, make a little blog, like, I can only really think of, like, creators like Chad Chad as, like, female creator, 
I don't. I never watched Dylan Mulvaney before. After I, I was actually the, I didn't even finish the story about the aesthetician and where I like it sounded like I was about to make fun of Ms. Mulvaney, and all of a sudden, all that I said was like, "Dude, if you're gonna do like these ones, like one of these like freaking um arm like type like warmer thing, or like arm." freaking glove like long glove at least go for the new the new stuff like who does who does like really vintage like as as a woman that you know besides kim kardashian wearing the damn maryland dress which we'll now see we'll now see i'm about to play it for the whole nutting saloon over here Building the hype, dude. Let's go. It's gonna be great, I'm telling you. But, um... Besides bloggers... Another person that really inspires me, like, with, like, when I did the montage of Hell. Actually, that's literally two inspirations that might have, might, you might actually hear the one that's alive tell you that the other inspired them after I've said something, but maybe not. But, like, making, like, montages, like, I literally lived in Olympia for, like, a while. And then, and Tequila and Burian, and then later... I happened upon these, like, crazy, like, satanic ritual videos of Kurt Cobain that were montages of where I used to live, like, back in the freaking 80s and, like, early 90s, and it was really awesome to watch them as a new resident, like, a current resident of the area. And then I also used to live in Southern California, and now I'm living in New York. And the other person that I feel like likes to make these, like, little montages, that, like, she does it extremely well and has, like, you know, has gained a following and a backing in doing so. And, like, has improved her social media presence and it's, like, made a huge, like, impact statement as a as a female performer and like human Lana Lana Del Rey who I like I think about her all the time I once went paddle boarding at Marina Del Rey like right around the time that Venice Bitch came out because I was leaving the area at the time I was just finishing school and I was like talking the other day about how the Fleishmans used to commute they used to live down there and commute up here for work i find that fascinating and i don't know a lot of people they don't like this up here and like the they won't shut up about they'll talk about the old this tavern culture and whatnot. I don't know. But a lot of these people don't have the type of, like, fluency in, um, colloquial English that I have. They legitimately don't know how... They don't have the street smarts to, to be in some parts of the United States that they... I bet you do wonder and throw a lot of shade. So it's felt, trust me. It's not like I don't, like, uh, this, this winter was like being struck in the face with the curveball. That was so curvy that it just, like, it was legal and then it just shot up and just fucking broke my fucking shit, dude. <laughs> Shut up. Fuck up. It's like, 
I, I'm still so, and the outcomes of it, dude, like, you guys don't understand. I told the, the dude, try this in a small town, dude. I did, I did. I told the police chief the other day, fuck you and your police force. You bitches, dude. What? And it's like, and it's because of what they did, you know? They protected this woman from this, like, super fucked up bipolar, like, instance of like assuming this like vigilante fucking and then they were like oh you can't you can't charge her because it's just medical malpractice you know you were like you were at her thing yeah what dude like when these like nurses and shit like inject their patients with like lethal amounts of something like what the fuck does that not have to do with like homicide you know, this was an assault, like, regardless of what they think, and a lot of, a lot of authorities tried to keep this from being noted properly, and I feel like they should just, because I don't, like, to be honest, if she can correct herself, then I wouldn't want her license state like taken away from her. Um, but if she does this to people, if she's done this to someone before, and she'll do this again. To anyone. At one point during my calls. Regarding the issue that led to me, being asked not to do that anymore. In a more serious way. I I was once, you know, told by her boss, we had no idea who you were. And I said, I'm anyone that walks in the door of this place. You're a chiropractor. Like, you don't assault people. It's not your, like, you don't anything. Besides make the adjustments that you were trained. <laughs> Super unhealthy. And I feel like I've made a comeback. Like it's unusual like that somebody would have the means that I had. Literal artificially made intelligence. A compilation of efforts. That I've like, you know. You all should, I mean, again, today's thing is all about the, oh, who d did what. But you all should read this correspondence, this one-way correspondence <laughs> that happened sometime around September, October when I was hit in the head. Or just soon after it, and had like a fucking the wormwood. So I took the wormwood. Anyways, in the midst of making this, like one of these montages that I'm gonna do, like Lana style, you know, I'm trying to show this, show the sky. Excuse me. That was a little tiny little. I'm gonna eat soon. You know, show the sky and show, like, me. And I actually really wanted the, okay, lion, milk, great mother in the sky. That's the track that I want to use. Yeah, when the sky is blue. I'm going to do that, and in the process of doing that, I'm also going to bury a treasure. I have a treasure chest. And I decided that I'm going to bury the treasure. It's going to be a shallow burial. And I'm going to do it at, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like they tell people to dig, like, to call before you dig when it's, like, residential areas. I, like, I honestly 
fucking want to just doubt a million times that, like, anywhere, like, where I'm headed, like, the woods could possibly be any sort of underground wiring, like, or, like, anything like that. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll dig carefully, but they gotta bury some treasure. It's part of the promise, it's part of the thing that I wrote, and apparently when this is all over, some, someone's finally gonna talk to me, cause, like, You know, I actually wanted to tell you all that if any of you don't want to call me Alice for racist reasons, because you feel like this is this Anglo-Saxon sovereign name, that you don't want to give me the benefits of. Um, if you don't want to call me Alice, you can call me by my middle name. And the short for it, which is Sai. My middle name is Cinder. And then it's Sai. So Sai Loon or Alice Loon. And, um, yeah. Sai spelled a little bit differently is like a very common name in Africa. And I vibe. I vibe with the fact, but I like to spell it different. I like to just spell it C-I. But then actually the way that Africans spell the name Sai with an E at the end is also a word in the English dictionary that means to fall down, which is very relevant to being Miss Alice with the, um, Missing jar of orange marmalade and all of these things. These things, these, these. You understand what I mean? Like, you understand what, you understand what I mean? Hmm. Glad that's over. so well can I put it like what should I get like sh like have my eye like move <laughs> Miss Alice is so sad sometimes Oh, I'll make sure that when I go bury my treasure, I do the full Chunibyo cosplay. I probably won't do a video of it. Because, like, I don't know. You guys are probably, like... Nah, I'm just kidding. You're not, you're not lame for it. I just, like, I just, like, literally wish I had help. And I've been asking for help. I honestly, like, I, I know I need help making content if I'm... If I'm weather because I to be honest with you again I think I'm in a place where I would seriously like to have the option to tell the people around me that make me require my phone for the reasons that I require my phone that like one of the accommodations that I want is for me not to need to have a phone like my rent is like paid for and my electricity is like paid for like recurringly and then 
you know, I have enough for, like, hopefully even, like, getting to have more food prepared for me more often. And then, like, I would, in that case, like, if I was living, like, a, like a post-war woman with a freaking checkbook right now, I'd be way happier. I, like, I am going insane from it. And I can, you know, I'm not the kind of person that, like, I know, I know that this is something like that devil's snare from, from Harry Potter. Like, I know that, like, being like oh I can take this and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break the decibel at one of like one of my options or supposed options I'd rather call them because I I cannot see it like between the cultural status of working at some of these like national chains and retailers and things and like the financial status of it it's it's like it it's not it's not worth it a lot of a lot of us will be Possibly catching a case in that scenario. More likely than, than like we would if going about it like I am gonna go about it, which is that I've decided already that I'm gonna be a good girl until I get done with laser hair removal maybe enjoy like one more winter out here in western new york to like enjoy the winter unlike i couldn't last year and maybe cut it short early because i think a move to portland is like swelteringly tempting unless more options and more help comes through in in this in this region like independent help too cuz it, it like honestly like i i can't i can't just sit back and endure that kind of you know i forgot my wheel cart the other day when i went to the korean store and i like hurt my my you know because i've already been forced to live in such a way i injured my back as a youth that just happens to be something and uh and then i was in seattle with my with my backpack for too long so I've hurt myself and and it doesn't it it doesn't go away. I've talked about it before. I I'm, I might need surgery, but I've been dealing with incompetent doctors that are like very racist towards me. And um no one likes that. No one likes that, especially when I feel like these days like I don't know what it is they expect from me out here. Like, they tried to get me to go to just, like, do, like, a job and make a little more money and be, like, that much off of the margin, whereas I'm, like, literally 50-50 grinding right now at all times. But I'm pretty damn decent at the version of it. 
This is the non-skateboarding version. This is just living life, running the mill of the town, you know? It's a metaphor. It's not a real thing. Um, this town doesn't even have a mill, I don't think, anymore. Or like, yeah, man, I think it does have lumber mills still. I think that my town has such a history in that that they likely do have a couple of lumber companies still here and, and a lot of the town residents are super pissed off because some fucking bitcoin miner bought a warehouse to place a bunch of cooling fans and fucking mine a bunch of bitcoin it sounds so stupid to me dude it's fucking being stupid to me compared to like what I'm talking about about like just give me my fucking ingredients and my little fucking patch of garden that, like, I would love to call it a commune if you weren't about to fucking literally shove a whole fucking thing up your ass about, like, you know, like, communism, like, because you thought I was going to say that, but it's not what it's about. It's not even about... It's about an egalitarian society, but you don't want to listen. You've already literally threatened to fucking break my neck again. And you're telling me that what this woman did was, you know, everything that was, like... Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus, like... I hope that you get stuck under her chiropractic table somehow, and that she... Oh. sits over it and farts on your face or something. I'm trying to do the... I don't have both hands. Let's get the full kawaii over here. Very lame. Some of you that I'm talking about are so, so lame. Including you, chiropractor bitch. That's right. Yup. You're goddamn right. You know? Like... And this whole culture of, like, you guys are just going to have to, like, t I don't know. I wrote about it in my manifesto about how you guys are going to have to kill me the way that either you could see the example of um, Yulia Volkova and the character that she plays in um, the uh, video for her musical duo called Tattoo. This is a Russian music project is very famous um but there's a song called white robe and there's a video for that and i've got this friend that i used to know in high school that looks just like liana katina and i was thinking that you could either kill me exactly the way that she's about to be killed by the soviet union while she's pregnant in the video, in the music video, or like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because I'm just getting so sick of you all just like not accepting me living and breathing. And my next move is in fact to go to Portland to go address some pain And the ways that, well, I'm going to do it. Just like your grandpa I used to go to the fucking Sears to go get the goddamn To go get that kit.
That's about what I'll be up to. And I wish I could do it here. So that I could like go right outside of this of the sanctuary and then see snow. But I think I, I think I should go out there. Cause I've got also purposes of wanting to research certain types of fungi I've talked about. All right, it's Tony Bennett pizza time. I'm gonna put on some of his music too. I did that with Shanae the other day when like, it's almost like these folks will come on the news and then I'll be reminded of them. I can't remember what I did when Kirstie Alley died, but I feel like maybe that was when I invented those like those Korean special sauce burgers. She makes me think of like a I don't know, like a fancy Chuck burger like handed to me at heckin' Cheers with like a little flag on it, you know. Quite hefty, the thing, you know what I mean? With some real, real fashionable basket of fries as well. Some good people, dude. I'm, I'm not, I, there's a, like, there's a lot of, like, the, the documenting my injury was, like, like, this, like, hatred towards, like, America that I, I felt enmity and I felt post-traumatic stress disorder probably worsen quite a lot and I still have a little bit of distrust um but I'm I'm probably about as American as the fucking vegan cherry pie with coffee that I'm gonna that I'm gonna bake that I'm inspired by King Solomon's Reef dude like it's Kurt Cobain's favorite dive you know that I used to go to at three in the morning. Like, that's how American I am. <laughs> Ain't nobody telling me not to tread on them and making me feel a guilt trip. By the way, I wrote about this nine months before the song came out. But I don't think that Billie Eilish is what what was I made for. I don't I don't think that was a guilt trip towards anyone but the self, actually. And I I think that songs that are like one of the most amazing things to address in a song is like just like your own hacking reflection. Oh, she was she was made to be like one of the heckin' like uh success stories of music loving America. And just like anybody, she shouldn't have to do anything for anyone. And I definitely don't think that we'd have her lovely music if she was forced to be who she is. I went to high school in Ojai. And, um... And it was, like, it was a life-changing shift to me. Like, like, hanging out in, like, the... white oak white oaks yeah white oak forests it it changes like who you are it cha literally changes you it makes you makes you different it makes you a lot wiser anyway anyone up here should know how lucky they are and yet we shouldn't have people 
trying to guilt trip us and tell us like, you know, you should feel so lucky and things and, and threatened and whatnot of our, you know, what we've grounded, where, where we're grounded, where we're getting grounded, where, where we're at. Shouldn't have to hear people telling us to move along when we've been displaced enough times. Part of my manifesto, the only real thing that I wanted was to something like be, feel at least more like my own landlady. Like the person that makes where I live livable gets the benefit, you know? Me, I don't want myself. I'm falling for me. Falling, falling, falling. Yeah. Anyways. That's testing out the microphone. And then we'll be the Mukbang. And then we'll be the Marilyn Monroe song. And those will be today's posts. This one will take a long time to upload. But I'm glad that it's not a short. Because I really need to work more on my shorts. The one I did today was kind of cool. Saying like, oh, this thing is this. Yeah. Yeah. And I probably will blog, like, as, as like, far as I can get before maybe, like, I'm offered help or, like, do it as randomly as I've been doing it just because this is, like, literally, this is, this is the point of these videos. It's, like, consistently posting ever since I was the victim of, like, a, f like, a false thinking, f like, insane someone's narrative that like wasn't in their right mind in the community protecting her act of you know hate crime this is probably what it you know what it really honestly was And I want people to know the truth about it. And I want to stay safe from it, too. That's why at one point I called it my alibi. Just to keep posting every day what I do. These things that I do are totally content worthy. Even though my editing is not yet still. Stuff I do is content worthy. Like those, like that... That Viking Juicy Lucy is gonna be bomb. I gotta show you all the, the burgers with the Korean pickle special sauce. I gotta show you all what mangu with like a nice little Chinese steamed fish is all about. I gotta show you all what steamed falafel is like. Stuff that's worth doing while I, I mean, like, for the longest time now, I've been complaining that I have this, like, it's almost like this mild, very mild catatonia-like feeling. That's like a triple. That's like saying, like, it's mild, and that's saying that it's only like catatonia. It's not, I mean, catatonia is a serious situation where you're really staring at a wall, but I've I felt this to some small degree. And I wish I had somebody to talk to and engage with that was a, like a positive person. It like shocks me that I feel like I'm more I like on seemingly like on the edge of like needing to be in trouble in the eyes of these
officials near it and riot, and yet, like, the, the people around me that, like, are nothing but trouble are allowed to, to be troubled towards me. They're going to effectively get me moved to Portland. They've done so, they've done so. I mean, that what they say about this out here, this is not worth getting caught up in. No, no, they be running like a... Yeah. Just like was in Seattle back in the day. Like, I moved here because of the snow and stuff. And, like, really needing a place to rent and live. And, like, close quarters for a while because I felt this... My indigence... It's like, I feel like indigence causes, like, a little bit of, like, um... It's like, a, it's like a kind of a weird way of putting it, but like it because it's not really it doesn't have to do with like the physical mean like a meaning of it that like could pertain to like a physical aspect of the body, but it more pertains to like what you actually feel like. Like, like in this displacement and this indigence, this poverty causes one to feel depleted of energy in a way that kind of makes them act a little precocious. A little bit Lolita. A little, a little bit like, you know, like out of control. Incontinence, you know what I mean? Like, I felt like I'd be like in the same clothing that I'd been in for like literally four days because they had closed the the laundry and shower place for the weekend in a park and my body was like way too charged up with like like I had just not I was like I was like over the point of not being able to take it anymore a couple times over it's like it's a way that people need to start talking about people that have like the you know I hate I hate like hearing rich people talk about homeless people like like animals and like savages and things because like what the what the fuck you might as well some of you treat domestic pets like better than that. I should be ashamed of that. It's not... It's not something you should be proud of, dude. Your dog is not morally... better than the ways in which this person was skewed. Don't even... It's a human being. Yeah. Anyways... Alice Siloon out. We'll see me soon. Literally gonna dress up like Chunibio with a dang eye patch. Like a pirate. And, uh. <laughs> I'll get it on right later. Uh, and then go, like, bury some. Like, literally, it is a treasure chest. Is like literally, and I found it at a giveaway box, and it's a treasure chest. And I'll make this video exactly two hours long by waiting another minute. And then I'm gonna make my pizza. And then it's mukbang. Enjoy me turtle chips. Probably put on some makeup. Look cute for it. And then. One silver dollar. But I, you know, I don't want to like, I don't want to ruin it. Here, let's 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 do the eye patch. In the last like twenty seconds, and I'll do like a pose. Hmm. 